All right. Hello, my friends, and welcome to our fourth pair programming. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to look at a scatter plot, and we're going to do it with some basketball data, looking at some stats of the 2019 and 20 basketball season. And we're going to be looking at some uh, three-point percentages, I think. But, you know, let's take a look, and we'll clean up our data and see what we have to do. Now, today is going to be all about visualizations, and I love scatter plots, and so we're going to do scatter plots, and we're going to look at a ton of different parameters to make your chart look good, and, well, as good as you can make it within matplotlib. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's switch it over here. Um, if you're not following already on Data Independent on Twitter, I only have 22 followers. Don't worry, my feelings won't be hurt if you don't follow. It's okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new uh, Python notebook and let me zoom in for us here and I'm going to title it uh, I forget what the other ones are called so I'm going to copy this I'm going to put it right in there pair program number three and we're going to call this basketball scatter plot and I don't know why I love scatter plots so much but I do so I'm going to rename that and so the stats we're actually going to be looking at is I will um, put this URL right inside of here as a comment and I want that to be down here so um, all this code will be available on github afterwards and so no worries if you can't grab it right now and data set and so what you can see here is we have a bunch of basketball stats and so we have a player's name we have their team position age all this other good stuff and I noticed that there was an excel uh, exporter which is a good thing because then that could give us that could make it clean for us now one other option that we could do is and I don't know if this will work but we'll try it is you could just highlight this and copy it. I just copied. And then you could go import pandas as PD. Great, that's right there. And then you could say df equals pd.read clipboard, meaning it's gonna read what you just copied. And let's see if this will work. Uh, no, it didn't really work. And I don't have the energy to figure out why it doesn't work because I don't really care that much. I'm just gonna export this uh, as Excel. And actually I want the regular season. So let me make sure I have that. Okay, good. Um, and it looks like it's actually in alphabetical order here. So I'm going to go Excel, and then it looks like it downloads right here. And I don't love that it's an XLS file format, but, you know, whatever. And so I'm right now just off the screen. I am going to copy this, and I'm going to put it inside um, my little folder that I have here. So I'm just showing you what I'm doing here. So we have, let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, so, nope, pair programming. Great, and I'm going to paste the item. And then there's the download that just happened. Um, and so let's go back over here and let's go read. But in this case, we're going to say XL, read Excel. And then we're going to say, I think it started with MBA. Nope, I already forget what it's called. And so if you forget what it's called, you can um, just click tab and then it'll show you what's in there. And it looks like it's that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. Okay, looks like it's not working. No such file directory, great. And that's probably because I need to name it the actual file that it is. No such, no such. Um, and so I'm just going back here, <laughs> seeing what it looks like. Uh, pair programming, okay. NBA player stats, NBA stucker, XLS. You know, this is too complicated. And so I'm just, I'm gonna, rename this to something easy so that it works out well for us and then i'm going to copy that's why because there's two spaces right there and then i'm just going to copy that set it in stone and then paste that right there and then there we go great so then let's look at our df.head beautiful so as you can see here i have oh interesting so you see here how the headers are actually in zero um are in uh Wow, and this looks like it's going to be an absolute mess. But let's see if we can let's see if we can fix this. Um, it looks like because you see how here we have an acronym, but then we have turnovers, turnovers per game. Anyway, it looks like a freaking garbage mess. And so the other thing that we can do in a second here is convert it on Google Sheets. But we'll see if we need to do that. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is if you go over to your read Excel uh, pandas. Um, you'll notice that it's a derivative basically of read CSV um, sheet name and so header and so um, it's basically going to be the row that is your header and it's going to be default equals zero which is true and so we're going to try uh, 
we're gonna try doing that. So let's say header, oops, header, let's see, I made it header equals true, no. Header equals zero, no. It might be header equals one, because it's the first one. Okay, great, so there we go. Um, it looks like an absolute garbage though. I mean, look at all these different columns. And so, oh boy, one thing that we could do is just rename. And so that's what I think we're gonna do, um, which isn't the best, but whatever. And so the way that I like to do this is I'm gonna go columns, uh, oops. And so then we have this entire list of columns. And so what's nice is that since it just prints out and this is a list already, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna say DF columns equals and then I'm gonna say this list of things that we just copied over. But as you can see, we have way more stuff than we need to. And so I'm actually just going to delete all the extra stuff. And so I could probably do this um, by looking at where this like uh, uh, percent sign is, but, oh, nope. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. I wanna do, um, I wanna keep the percent sign because it actually is part of the column name. And so, just doing that. If you're watching this uh, recorded later and not live, then you probably don't wanna skip over this part, but whatever. Um, this is called data cleaning. Um, points per game, fabulous. But you know, it's, it's actually not such a bad thing because then you get to know your data a little bit better. And who doesn't wanna to get to know their data a bit better? One of my old data teachers, she said, uh, you gotta get intimate with your data. So right now I'm just deleting all this and it's probably easier if I steals per game. Great. And if we need to reference these, we'll just go back to the original turnovers per game. Great. Uh, versatility index is a metrics players ability to produce points, assists and rebounds. The average player will score about five on the index. All top players score about 10. Okay. So it's like a random derived metric. Everybody loves these derived metrics. And I tell you what, usually only they understand them, but whatever. And so, okay, we are there right now. So what I did, as you can see before, we have, we have a big long list of, um, you know, we have a big long list of columns right here. And I'm gonna rename this big fat long string columns with these new ones that we just created. And so I just said DF columns equals this. And I have a pretty unformatted list. But in order to fix this, you could just, you know, just clean it up a little bit. I won't remove all the white spaces because that'll take too much time, but um, I'll probably do that before I upload this code. Anyway, so there we have that. So if I were to restart this, I'm going to import my data set. I'm going to rename the columns and let's make sure that it works. And yeah, that looks a whole lot better than it did before. And so I'm going to take this and because this is kind of like an import step, I'm just going to put it right below my import up here. Um, so that when I load my data set, it's gonna rename the columns right away. I like to do this just to reset my data on the beginning, great. And I see that rank is zero here, so I wanna make sure that, well, I don't, this looks like it's in alphabetical order, so this rank actually doesn't mean much to me right now. And so I'm actually gonna drop that rank column. So I'm gonna say df drop rank, and then I think it's axis equals one, let's try that. And then there it is dropped and you can see that it was returned to me. And so I need to set in place equals true. Hopefully this works, it does. And there we go, we just dropped it. So in place will, instead of having it returned to you, it's just gonna happen right in the very beginning. Um, great, and I see that my little camera here is messing that up a little bit more, so let's do that. Fabulous, um, cool. So, all right, so we, what we wanna do is we wanna make a scatter plot. And if we're gonna make a scatter plot, we're gonna need matplotlib. So matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Um, I've had these import codes like burned into my memory and burned into my my uh, my, my fingers because you know, it's just, you always do that. And so I just imported matplotlib. And let's see what would be cool to make a scatter plot of. So we have team, which would be kind of cool to do colors. We have position, which would be kind of cool to do colors again. We have somebody's age, games played, minutes per game. I kind of like the minutes per game, but we'll see it. And then, so we have, oh, I mean, I'm sorry, MPG, minutes per game, and then min. I wonder how that's differently, how that's different than um, min. Wait, so MPG, minutes per game, percentage of a team's minutes used while player, while on the floor. 
percentage of a team's minutes used by a player while he was on the floor. Hmm. So I think that's just percentage of time on the court for the team, maybe. Whatever. Um, usage, total. Anyway, I want to do... I like three points. Uh, I like three point and three point percentage. And so let's start off by doing this. Um, I want to see the three point attempts on the x-axis and then I want to see the three-point percentage meaning how many did they make on the on the y-axis and so that's gonna be kind of cool and then let's we'll do some size and we'll do some alpha too if we get if we get a hard time so when you whenever you make a scatter plot with uh, pandas you have a couple options you can either make your scatter plot directly from pandas meaning I could go um, I could go uh, df dot it's dot plot dot scatter. Yep, and so you, then you could uh, supply an X and a Y, but then you're right on top of the data frame. And what I found is you're limited by just a little bit of functionality. And so what I like to do is I like to call the scatter plot directly from matplotlib, and then you kind of have the full flexibility to call whatever you want on top of your data set. And it works just as fine. It's a bit more verbose, but it, it works. Um, okay, so in order to do that, I'm gonna say plt dot scatter. And so now what plt.scatter needs is if I um, click shift and then tab tab, it'll open up this um, documentation for me. And you see the two required things are X and Y. And you know that they're required because they don't have a default set value. And you know that because it doesn't say equals anything. So let's go ahead and let's do X and Y. So I'm gonna make this super explicit here because I wanna make sure that everyone understands. We're gonna say DF three point attempt. Great. And then we're gonna say, I like my parameters to line up. We're gonna, oops, we're gonna say df dot, and then three point percentage. Great. And we have that. Cool. So as you can see here, we have our first, uh, we have our first chart and it's very basic, but it's gonna do for right now. And you'll notice here that we also have this little extra garbage up here. This is just where the um, uh, object sits in memory. If you want to get rid of it, just simply just put a semicolon after your um, command there. And so here we have uh, the different percentages. And so if I were to read this just right off the bat, what does it look like? Well, first I, I wanna make it a little bit bigger. And the way that you do that is you do figure fig size equals, and I always get this messed up. I wanna make it length and width. I think it's eight and 12. It's eight, no, I always mess that up. I, I wanna do 12 then eight. So then there we go. So we get a little bit bigger. So what this says is, well, and also, I for, for just a second here, I forgot what was on the X and what was on the Y. So let's add some labels to us. And so plt.x label. And so this just means what do you want on the X side? I'm going to say three point attempts. And then there it is right there. And then we want to do the same thing, but for a Y label. And so the Y label will um, three point purse. Great. So there we go. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and let's add a title. Um, so we're going to say uh, three point, oops, point attempts versus, mm, we'll just say purse. Great. So what this looks like here is, it's actually, this is actually kind of funny. Um, there's high variability. And so we could do this by looking at the standard deviation for a different, um, uh, different three point attempt like ranges, but we won't do that. But as you can see here, the people who shoot really low, three point, no, three point attempts, they either make none or they make a bunch. Now this is generally gonna happen because um, when you have a smaller denominator, you're gonna have a wider range of percentages that's gonna, um, that's gonna come about here. Now, the other thing is you can see here that it starts to trail off. And so it's kind of interesting how there's like an asymptote sort of, I know it's not, technically an asymptote, but it's sort of right around the, right below the 40% mark. And if we were to look up uh, Steph Curry three point um, history, let's just say history so we can look at all seasons. And I hope we go to basketball reference. Great. And so let's go to Steph Curry. And so here I'm gonna look at Steph Curry's um, three point, wow, that's annoying. Maybe I could just see more and then, wow, that's annoying. Good Lord. Okay. Anyway. Wow, 
they got to make money, I guess. Anyway, um, so if we're to look at this three point percentage, and so 0.43, so you can see Curry here, he's right around the 43, 42% mark. Wow, that is just horrible. Anyway, so that gives us reference on um, how good this is. And if let's just say we wanted to show where Steph Curry, his um, general average lands on there. Well, let's draw a, a horizontal line on our chart as well. And that's actually called, uh, that's abbreviated as H line. So horizontal line. And um, the way that I like to do this is let's draw it. And uh, you need to first give it a Y because you need to tell it where you want it on the chart up and down. And let's put it at 0.43. And then we need to give it an X min equals and we need to give an X max equals. Because let's just say, for example, we wanted to do it from like 100 to 300. Um, on our x-axis, well, no problem. That plot label h lines. Whoops. Um, we'll do it for us. It'll draw it right there. However, I want it to span the entire um, chart, and so the way that I like to do this is actually programmatically and set it. And so I'm going to say min uh, shot attempts equals, and then I'll call df three point attempts dot min, and then we'll say max shot attempts dot max so this way if i load up a new data set from another year i don't need to go back and hard code these numbers because it's already preset for me and to show you what this would look like this is actually going to return an integer for me and so if i do dot max you can see the max is 843 and if i say dot min you can see the min is zero so this will draw my h line at a um from zero to 843 and so in order to do that let's take min shot attempts put it right there max shot attempts let's put it right there and so then it draws it across the entire line for us. But the other thing I want to do too is um, this line's a little harsh for me. And so I'm going to say, I think it's line styles, and I'm going to say dashed. And then it'll dash it for me. Great. So now we have Steph Curry. And, you know, let's get actually really, let's get a bit like a bit more complicated here. I'm going to say plt.text. And so this one's actually pretty cool because you can say an X and a Y and an S, meaning, um, you can place text on your chart anywhere you want uh, according to an X and a Y. And so I want to do this programmatically as well. And so I'm going to take this 43 and I'm going to say uh, Steph Curry uh, reference. I'm going to say purse because it's being very explicit. 43, I'm going to take that, put that down here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if I'm using 43 in just one spot, I will just write 43 in one spot. However, if right when I start to use it in two spots, then I'll go ahead and I'll make a variable for it. Anyway, so I need to, um, cause I don't want to repeat myself. And so I'm going to say my X. And so my X is going to be, well, where do I want to have it on this line? And I kind of just want to have it over here. Um, and the way that I like to have it just over here. So it's relative to where the chart is. So I sometimes just do, um, I'm going to do the max that we have, and then I'm going to multiply it by point, We'll call it, we'll start at 90. And the reason why is because what it's gonna do is it's gonna place my text all the way over here, but then because it's multiplied by 90%, it's gonna go 10% this way. Great. Um, and then I need to set my Y. So Y equals Steph Curry reference percent. And what I, the text I wanna do, which is denoted by S, um, I'm gonna say Steph Curry. And let's, um, Steph Curry, let's hope, basketball reference. Great. Let's hope we don't get any more ads. Let's just pull out a random season that was 0.43. This one will do. We'll say 1819. Great. Um, I'm gonna say 1819. So let's see what we have. Okay, cool. So you see how it's over here, and I see two things. One, I need to bump up the location a little bit because Steph Curry's on top of the line, and I need to bump uh, bump it over to the left a little bit. So I'm gonna say 0.85, and I'm gonna say Y percent, and then I'm gonna say plus. Um, I'm just going to multiply this by like, like 2%. So 1.02 and see what we have here. Great. That actually looks pretty good. It's just a hair type close to the line. So I'm going to switch that to three. That looks good for me. So now you can have Steph Curry's reference. Um, now you can have Steph Curry's reference. Cool. So let's go ahead and let's do, um, two more things. So we have our, um, We have our scatter plot with our X and Y. And so what I want to do is I want to do uh, size. And so let's go ahead and let's fix up this size. And so size means how big are your, your, are your, um, 
are your dots going to appear and size is denoted by s and you can either pass a scalar meaning all this meaning a single number and all of your data points are going to be the exact same size or you can pass a list of values and that list is going to be the same length as your data frame and then every single item will be um, have its own size so for example if i were to say size equals 10 we can see here that they all get a bunch they all get smaller and so what i want here is i, I kind of like this size for the smallest maybe even like a seven yeah that sounds good but then what i want the size to be is let's see what column would be awesome to have the size on and so it could either be you know minutes per game so we'd see who plays the most mm, that one's okay but it's not wonderful uh, i'm going to zoom out just a little bit here um, blocks per game mm, true i think this is true sh yeah true shooting percentage so i think what i'll do let's do re let's do rebounds per game cuz i think rebounds per game will show us who are the people that are not only making the most three pointers, but they're also having the most rebounds. And so that's RPG. So if I were to go down here, I would show you what RPG looks like. Oops, not RPS, RPG. And so you can see here, it's a list of numbers. And what's interesting is we could use this to be our size. However, if we just use RPG to be our size, you'll notice that the sizes, they're not too big. Um, yeah, they're, they're not too big. And so what we need to do is we actually need to multiply this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by multiplying it by five. And then you'll see here that all the numbers of the rebounds per game, they get multiplied by five. Now, because we're not looking at exact numbers here, we're just looking at sizes, multiplying by five is okay. So you can see here we have, um, we have some different sizes in here. However, it's not big enough for me. I want to multiply by 10. And good, that is a little bit better. Um, but still, I kind of want these bigger ones even bigger. So what if we went 30? And now you can see that it, it's okay. Now here's the problem and here's where it takes, a, it's a bit, a bit of an art and a science. Multiplying is gonna scale everything proportion, proportionally to each other because you're just multiplying by 30. However, if you start to square your numbers, then the bigger numbers will get bigger faster than the smaller numbers do. Because when you actually multiply it by itself, then it just it exponentially gets bigger versus linearly, linearly gets bigger. And so one technique that um, I've seen people do is they will actually square um, their sizes. And as you can see here, the bigger ones get bigger, but the small ones still stay smaller. And so that is exactly what I want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this just a little bit. So I made the bigger ones bigger. So I separated them a bit more. And then now I want to make both the bigger ones and the smaller ones bigger. And so the way I'm going to do that, I'll show you just down here, is I were to square those, then you get the squares, great. But now I'm going to take that and I'm just going to multiply it by two. So then now we get, it's like another transformation. So this made it a bit more polar, that is going to make them bigger proportionally. So I'll take that and I'll multiply by two. Great. So now you can see that the bigger ones are big and these smaller ones are super small. Um, Fabulous. So that looks good to me. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is adjust what's called the alpha. And the alpha is going to be how see-through or how transparent your dots are. Because as you can see, it looks just like a big blob of blue right here, but that doesn't tell us anything good. Now, I'm going to say A equals 0.5. Well, oops, no, it's not A, my mistake. It's alpha is 0.5. And now you get a little bit of see-through on there. So this helps show kind of density a little bit better. Um, fabulous and so the unfortunate part is that alpha I'll show you right now let's do uh, matplotlib scatter alpha unfortunately can only be a scalar um, so it can only be a float and that means it can only be a single number so unfortunately what I wish you could do is I wish you could have a list of numbers that would be input into your alpha just the same so that you could have different transparencies um, However, Matplotlib doesn't let you do that. Now, there's ways around that. You could probably do like a for loop and add each dot individually with its own alpha, but we're not gonna do that today. Great. Um, sweet. So now that we have this, the other cool thing to do would be to do colors, but I think I'm gonna skip that for today. Um, the last thing that I'll do is, um, mm -mm -mm. 
Yeah, the last thing that I'll do is we have Steph Curry right here, but I want to see everybody who was above Steph Curry and over 200 point attempts. And so I want to put on text labels for everybody above Steph Curry. So it looks like one, two, three, four, five different points. And so I can see who beat Steph Curry in field and fuel uh, three point percentage, but um, had more than 200 attempts. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm first. I'm just gonna go below right here and I wanna extract those people that were better than Steph and had more than 200 attempts. And so I'm gonna do this the long way, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create uh, two filters. And so I'm gonna say 3.% oops, 3.% is greater than and is greater than Steph Curry reference. And then I'll create another, another one that is uh, above 200 attempts. So 3.0 is above 200. Great, and so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say um, DF, because it's a data frame, and I'm gonna say beat Steph, so that I remember what it is, and then that is gonna equal our data frame, but with the two filters applied. <coughs> with the two filters applied. <clears throat> Great, and so if I, were to, if I were to run that, it says no three point, yep, so I messed that one up. So three point percent, we still get our, our, our scatter was just drew, drawn for us, but now we have this new data frame, and I'll show you what this looks like. And it looks like it is um, five different players. Seth Curry, Doug, Marcus, JJ, and Duncan Robinson. Okay, great. So I wanna put these names on, um, on, the, on, the, on this chart. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna create a, we're gonna create a for loop. And so what I'm gonna say is for, um, for and this, we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate. And so we're gonna say for row in df dot um, beat Steph dot iter rows. Also, if you have questions on how to iterate through a data frame, iterate through data frame data independent. I hope I pop up on Google. Um, looks looks like I'm not popping up on Google. Anyway, so um, I'll just show you really quick. We have a iterate through rows. And wow, that looks horrible, but. Um, so we have five methods how to iterate through rows. And so I actually go through like five different ways to iterate through a data frame. And so feel free to go over and check this out. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna say df uh, uh, for row and df uh, beat stuff dot iter rows. And just to show you what it looks like, I'm gonna say print row. And as you can see, what happens is, is there's two things that get printed out. One is the index and two is the series that is that row. And so actually I just wanna pull out um, one of them. And so if you say for i in row in df.iter rows, then you'll drop this 183, 138 because you don't need it. And it'll say just print me the row. And as you can see that 138 gets dropped because if I did say print i, then uh, it would be right there. Anyway, so I wanna, I wanna take the row and I wanna take the, um, I believe it's called name. Yeah, so it's called full name. So then I'll show you what this looks like explicitly. And you know, this is kind of annoying how it keeps on drawing me to scatter. So just for right now, while I'm showing this to you, I'm actually gonna comment this out. And then that way it doesn't draw the chart anymore. It just gives me this. And so now we have the full name, great. And I want, because I wanna place them on the chart next to the dot, I need the Y and I need the X. And so I'm gonna say three point attempt, great. And I'm gonna say row, and I'm gonna say three, oops, three point percent. Great, so now I have their X and I have their Y. Fabulous. And so here's the cool part. I'll show you how this goes. We're gonna say plt.text, and then we're gonna say X equals three point attempt. So row dot three point attempt. And then we're gonna say Y equals three point percent. Great. And we want our text to be their full name, which is gonna be awesome. And so now I'm just gonna delete this part because we don't need the print anymore. And so, oh, well, it can't find, it doesn't have a plot to do it on. So let me, now let me bring back our plot. And so now you can see that we have their names right above their dots. However, it doesn't really look that great because they're all right next to each other, which is an is a unfortunate part of matplotlib. It, it doesn't do spacing very well. Um, so how do I want to solve this? You know, I think I want to solve this by uh, putting, I mean, you could do a little random little jitter only then it's kind of a mess. 
Um, well, first of all, let's just go ahead and multiply this a little bit um, by like 3%, 1.03. So we get it a little above, above their names. I'm going to delete that. So we get it a little above their names, which actually doesn't look so bad for spacing wise. All right, so then they're right there. But then now um, you can see that they're still uh, they're still on top of each other. So the quickest way I like to do this, and I, if somebody else knows a better way, please let me know. But um, the quickest way I like to do this is just adding a random number to um, uh, just adding a random number to the to the y-axis. So that means that they're going to be like scattered differently on top of each other. And so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to call mp.random.rand, and you can see here I get a random number above um, uh, a random number that's between one and zero. I'm just going to divide it by two so that effect isn't that big, and I'm going to say uh, random jitter equals this. And then I'm going to say random jitter. And so we have our percentage that's going to go up, but I'm going to say plus random jitter. And so then it should like add just a little bit and we'll see if this gives us what we need. Great. So as you can see, that's actually a whole bunch and it doesn't actually, it doesn't give me as much as I want. So I'm actually going to say random jitter divide by five. And you can see the, all these random jitters happen to be next to each other. And so let's find, actually, you know what I like doing? I like doing um, random states. And so if you do random state, that means you can get the exact same numbers as me. So uh, nump, oops, mp.random.seed, uh, seed equals, I always start with 42 to see if that works. And that actually, that's actually not so bad, but let's see. Great, so that's a that's a little bit better. So I'm just I'm not gonna play with it, I'm just gonna leave it right there. So you can see that Marcus Morris is here, Steph Curry, Doug, and JJ Reddick, and Duncan Robinson. So those are all the people that beat uh, Steph Curry for that year. Um, cool, so I think that looks actually not so bad for right now. Um, of course, you'd wanna add a legend to this. We're not gonna add a legend right now, but if you're presenting this, you'd wanna do it. And Yeah, I think I think I think that's all right. Um, yeah, I think that's good for right now. So that is making the scatter plot. We did the title up here. We did the y axis. We did the x axis. We added some text on here. We added some more text for Steph Curry. We added a horizontal line. We did size. We did transparency and. Uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty solid uh, scatter plot for right now. So, data independent, thank you guys very much, and we'll catch you next Thursday.